On today's show. James Harden and the Houston Rockets let a last second chance slip away in game two. To the east, should the Cavs sit a banged up Kyrie tonight? Will we see Damare? Who could be Atlanta's game changer? And TGIF will count down the starters' top 10 plays of the week, baby. It's Friday, May 22nd. The start starts now. World and welcome to another playoff edition of the starters whether you're joining us live online catching us on YouTube or watching on NBA TV We're very very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets and alongside me as always. That's Tass Mellis. It's Friday, baby To my right stars blog editor Trey Kirby. Hey, yo. hey, hey yo. Yo. Finally international man of mystery taking it to the max Lee Ellis. Amigos mm. Mm. Lily all right on tonight's show We are gonna look ahead to game two here in Atlanta between the Cavs and the Hawks couple banged up guys coming into this one Kyrie Irving Tamari Carroll will they even play? And we got the top 10 plays of the week. But first, we start in Oakland, where we got another very entertaining basketball game. Golden State Warriors edging the Rockets 99-98. The Rockets down 2-0 in this series. And the numbers say when a team goes down two like that, they lose the series 94% of the time. Only 16 teams have actually rallied to overcome the 2-0 deficit. Let's start, though, with this game at the end. Yeah. Uh, because that's what everyone's talking about. It's uh, the final stop by the Rockets and then the ensuing possession. It's a heartbreaker because the Rockets come down, the man you want with the ball in his hands, down one point, time ticking down. James Harden can't get a shot off. Oh no. Kind of dribbled into a double team. He could have gone right by them in my opinion, but he kind of holds back and then gives the ball to Dwight Howard, which isn't a good idea, 20 feet from the bucket, and then gets it back and then gets the ball poked away from him. It's really unfortunate. A nice call, or non-call, by Kevin McHale not to go to the timeout, in my opinion, because you got a four-on-three, it seems, for a few mm -hmm. seconds, but James can't make it happen. Do you agree with this, Lee? The decision by McHale, and you see the frustration there from James Harden walking back, taking down those curtains. I, I the think, decision not to call the timeout. Yeah, I think coaches often say they just have a defense scrambled like that. The ball's in the best player on the court on your team. You go down there, you just let him create. Unfortunately for him and the Rockets, it didn't work out. But I think if he had that situation again, I think McHale would make the same choice, and I think he's right. I, I wonder if it's sort of just a benefit of not doubling him the entire game, that he felt that he could pass off, get it back, like he always does, possession to possession, and go one-on-one. -on -one and end up with a really good shot because he gives it up. And in this instance, they make obviously make the right choice in doubling him. If he passes off, there's no one even really to pass off to in, in the situation when he gets it back. You're not going to give it to Dwight. And he thought he was going to go one-on-one, -on -one, it felt like. Yeah, I yeah think that's it, exactly right. In the post game, he said he, once he passed it to Dwight and got it back, he thought he was going to have five seconds to go one-on-one. -on -one, and that's more than enough time for James Harden. It's just that he didn't have a chance to go one-on-one -on -one because there's no reason to jump towards Dwight Howard at the three-point yeah. line. Yeah, if Harden could do this all over again, this exact same thing, you're right. No timeout is called. They get the rebound. He goes. They have the numbers. He's probably going to do one of a couple things. He's either going to possibly try and make that pass to Terrence Jones, who actually was sort of open. It would have been a difficult pass. Was open in the lane because Draymond Green attacked the offensive mm -hmm. rebound and was sort of out of the play. He either does that. He also may have taken that step back when he sort of, he created a he, little he bit of yes. room there. He runs into the double. It's a great play from Clay and Curry. He runs into it, too, but he does his little patented step back. And I think right before he passed it to Dwight, he could have shot that. Looked like there was a shot there. Would have been a tough one, but I mean, there's a lot of things I feel like James Harden would change if he had had it to do all over again. Maybe just keep rumbling and stumbling towards the basket yeah, as yeah. he's going. Maybe he'll get fouled. Well, I think he doesn't do that for a couple reasons. One, over the last two games, it's not like he was getting the benefit of the doubt with a lot of the whistles. And he had just gotten some, you know, a couple mm -hmm. possessions prior to get them back into the game. Yeah. Also, Clay had just blocked him yeah. on a very nice take to the basket for a couple possessions earlier, you know, a couple minutes earlier. I also think one more thing he may have done. When he gave it to Dwight there, I think he would have loved to have run at Dwight and almost use it as a little handoff, and he would have created yeah. space. Yeah. I mean, that was it. I mean, there's so many things. Or maybe call the timeout when he got it back there. Who knows? Seconds. But also, Clay and Steph did a great job there defending him because they were defending sure. with their feet, mm -hmm. and they didn't lose him when he did make that pass off. They didn't look for other uh, players on the Rockets. They said, let's just stay here because it's going back to him anyway. So credit to those guys. They had their hands there, but they weren't in there poking that could have potentially caused a foul. Ten seconds left, they've got the ball, down one. Coach Kevin McHale said in the postgame why he elected not to take a timeout, and it was a pretty good reason. When we got the rebound, someone fell down for them, I'm not sure who, and someone was out of bounds for them. So I wasn't, I mean, 
you, I could drop a lot of plays, and it, was, it wasn't going to be two, one guy laying on his back and one guy out of bounds. So I just let him go. Yeah, look, it, we'll take our best player coming downhill. He's a great downhill player. And that thing, they kind of pinched him, had a little bit of a bobble. I was trying to get, then the ball got loose, and I was trying to get a timeout late at that time. We should have, you know, if we had a timeout, could have probably called it with about two, two and a half. But look, when, I, when I glanced up and I saw two guys behind the play, I, there's just no way I was going to call a timeout at that point. This team has been ridiculously resilient. They, yeah. you know, since they found themselves in the Clippers series, they keep on fighting, they keep on fighting, but I think it's a legitimate concern now going into game three after giving away what seemed to be, you know, a, a game they could have grabbed on the road. Will they fight back in game three? Uh, because it, this one was a bit of a heartbreaker, it felt like, yeah. and it just felt like so many things went right for them to get into the situation there. The steal, an eight-second call, mm -hmm. you know, on Steph Curry late. I, I wonder how they, they fight back because they have been really impressive thus far. They have. And, look, we're breaking down that final play, like the Sapruder film here. Uh, <laughs> but they're not in this situation without James Harden. Oh, no. In two, in the entire game, he pours in 38 points, but at times single-handedly brought them back from deficits mm -hmm. in the second quarter. And it was sort of the, vice, the exact opposite, excuse me, of game one where the Rockets gave up a huge lead. It was the Warriors giving up a big lead in the second quarter. Harden was the huge reason why. He assisted or scored on 19 straight for Houston as they worked their way back into the game in the second quarter. And then, even late in that game, when the Warriors got a little bit of a seven-point lead or something like that, it was James Harden, once again, giving them even a chance. I think he just... A guy that is known as one of the best scorers in the league is probably, and you saw it there with the frustration with the curtains and apparently kicking chairs in the locker room <laughs> after, there's nothing more frustrating I would imagine for a guy who, who is just a scorer to not even get a shot up. He'll live with throwing oh, it yeah. up there and it rimming out or maybe just even goes wide left. He would live with that because at least he got a chance at it. Mm -hmm. It's not even getting that opportunity. It's going to kill him. And that's why I'm fine with Kevin McHale letting him go. If James Harden was 0 for 25 and he grabs that rebound, yeah. I'm happy with him going up the court and getting to the hoop the best way he can. Considering the game he was having during game two, he was just lighting everyone on fire. Every time he touched the ball, it seemed like somebody was going to score on the Rockets. Just didn't happen. James Harden shooting nearly 70% from mid-range in these two games in this series. Mm -hmm. 70%. Yeah. And winning some fans. I feel like yeah. there's I think a lot too. of people that were hating on James Harden this year because he draws a lot of free throws, and yeah. he's not drawing as many free throws right now. It looks like he's trying to score every time he goes into the to the lane or if he's hitting that step back. It's been awesome to watch. And One of my playmaking. favorite players. Oh, yeah, man. His passing is yeah. crazy. His wraparounds, the way he finds guys in the corner. He sees every angle on the court. How impressed were you to move on from James Harden for a second with Dwight Howard? I mean, this was a guy 30 minutes before the game that we didn't even know if he was going to play. They weren't sure. He obviously wasn't 100% even in the game. But despite playing on really one and a half legs there because of the knee injury in game one, he still got 19 and 17 and had an impact. And we showed you a million times. He made that situation where Barnes, when he drove baseline, mm -hmm. he challenged that at the rim and made that light, that shot difficult to even give them the chance. Go Dwight ahead. Howard deserves a lot of kudos, not only for playing on one knee and, and banging here in the Western Conference Finals, but he's taking a bit of a diminished role in the post. Uh, he's not being set up in, in post for this post touches, and it works out really well because I think those post touches, number one, just sort of take away from what this team is. That's not what this team is, and it's not the most effective uh, mode of offense. So. Uh, Dwight has shut up about that and is doing a great, great, great job. I mean, what else can you say? He, yeah. he has been phenomenal. He's one of their experienced leaders. He's mm -hmm. been to the finals, and I think it's it's rubbing off on all his teammates, how he's going out there with one knee uh, and working his butt off. It, it's impressive. When you saw him come out about five minutes in, you thought maybe that was going to be it for him for the night, but he did come out and fight through it. So credit to him for fighting through that pain and not only just going out there and just being a presence, but actually affecting the game as well at both ends because you know Draymond Green and Andrew Bogut both bang into him a lot. They really work him over, and he's still out there. So, I mean, the Rockets obviously need him to play it at this level if they're going to come back in this series, but uh, credit to him for being yeah. out there. They need, they need Dwight, and he's going to try. If he can play, he's going to give them the 15 and 15 or the 20 and 20 mm. type line. You know Harden's going to pour in the points. It was last night in game two. Outside of a little bit from Terrence Jones, they sure didn't get much else from anyone else, especially two guys in Josh Smith and Corey Brewer who helped them overcome that adversity against the Clippers. They were putting up goose eggs last night. James or Josh Smith is going to be 5 of 17. 5 of 17 in something like 20 minutes of play. Yeah, the Rockets don't have enough great offensive players to kind of survive off nights from all their guys. They can have one guy have a bad night, but basically game one, Ariza, Clint Capella, and Josh Smith had okay games, but Terry, Brewer, and 
Terrence Jones didn't really do anything, kind of flipped in game two. They have to have basically all their guys play well, which is a little encouraging going back to, uh, to Houston. You would think that the bench role players would probably play a little yeah. bit better at home. But uh, yeah, if they're, if they're not all playing well, the Houston Rockets are in trouble. Josh Smith has been really good for the Rockets. So he had an off night shooting, that's okay. But only one rebound, I think that really hurts him. Mm -hmm. Because especially when Dwight is hobbled, they need him to crash the glass. They need him to use his body and his athleticism to get up there and get a few more boards. See, I'm more worried about them, their mistakes on the defensive end. Leaving Steph Curry open, 12, she had 12 uncontested shots shots and he had eight of them. I mean, that just can happen. Yeah, sure. but it can happen with Steph Curry. Well, I mean. well, the shots go in, yeah, but if you want to win, you can't leave them open. There's just no possible way. There was a bunch of inbounds plays the Warriors ran that Rockets just couldn't find guys. Yeah. Um, and the fast break points, the Golden State had 20 again right off the bat. You reduce something in one of those categories, and, and I don't think we're talking about the supporting cast. They know that they didn't play a great game. That's what Kevin McHale was talking about when he up, went up to the post-game press conference. I, just watching this game, they make they make a few of those boo-boos, non-boo-boos, and <laughs> we're talking a different team. I, I would agree with that, uh, trying to at least stay with Curry. And they, and they usually do a good job through the first 10 seconds, and then oh, yeah. Curry gives up the ball, and they sort of forget about him. Yeah, and he finds, it, finds an open spot. But all that said, they give up, what, 36 points in the first quarter in Game 2 the Rockets yeah. did? And they held them to under 99 yeah. in the game. It was, oh, it's 2, 3, and 4 was impressive. It really 19, was. 19, 22, and 22. So here we go. The Rockets, I mean, they overcame a 3-1 deficit against the Clips, obviously. Now they're trying to climb out of the 2-0 hole. And only four teams in the conference finals as the lower seed have ever come back to win their series after losing the first two games. You see the Thunder, the last team to do it in 2012 over the Spurs. Actually won four straight, right, mm -hmm. in that series, which was a bit of a surprise. So obviously we'll have lots more still to talk about. With See you Saturday night. Rockets and Warriors, that's right. All right, got to take a break. When we uh, come back, we'll look ahead to tonight's game two between the Cavs and the Hawks. Back with the starters, looking ahead to tonight's game two of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Cavs with the 1-0 series lead. Both Cleveland and Atlanta dealing with bumps and bruises as this game approaches tonight, though. 8.30 p.m. start on TNT. Start with the Hawks. Kamari Carroll is what we know. He took part in shoot-around this morning, but he's still questionable for game two. Uh, co Coach Mike Budenholzer said Carroll's status would be a game-time decision. So keep your eye on NBA.com for the latest on Damari going down with a very scary-looking knee injury in game one. It it's... I'm ecstatic to even mm. find out that he's day-to-day. -day and, and that he took part in shooter on him. That's yeah. huge. Exactly, exactly. So a possibility that he goes, if he can't go, you would expect Kent Bazemore to get the start. Not meaning that Kent Bazemore would try and guard LeBron James for a chunk of the game. That would probably go to Millsap. But you would expect, again, if there is no Carroll, LeBron will look to be aggressive as he was in game one there, even with Carroll, a healthy Carroll on him there early. Yeah, I mean, you'll see, definitely see some Kent on him, and it obviously hurts that Tabo Cephalosha isn't there. Oh, yeah. Especially with Damari Carroll going out. But Kent will play hard. Hopefully we will see Damari Carroll in there. Uh, fact is, LeBron James can do whatever he wants on the mm -hmm. basketball floor whenever he wants. And that's what we saw in game one against Damari. The worrisome part for me was Damari was such a big part of the Hawks' offense, yeah. leading their team in half their team's games scoring through Series 1 and Series 2. And he only had five points in this game. I, I was worried about his offense just diminishing because he had so much more responsibility defensively, and that seemed to be the case. And like you mentioned, Skeets, if Paul Millsap is the guy who ends up guarding LeBron a lot of the time, that's really going to hurt the Hawks on the offensive boards too because Tristan Thompson and Mozgov already killed him on the yeah. glass in game one. So if you have Paul Millsap trying to chase LeBron around with Kent Bazemore trying to stick Tristan Thompson, good luck. And it might be a situation mm -hmm. like we saw in the Rockets Warriors series where Clay's doing his best to try and slow Harden oh, yeah. but then kills him on the offensive end because he doesn't have much left in the tank. For the Cavs, also of course dealing with their own injury, Kyrie Irving. Questionable game time decision as well. Now he skipped the morning shoot around today to get further evaluation on his ailing left knee. Uh, he only scored 10 points there in game one. He actually sat out the final eight minutes of that, that win in the series opener. If Irving can't go, you would imagine 
Lee's brother, the Aussie, Matthew <laughs> Della Vadova, would likely yeah, start at the point he'll guard probably, position. He'll probably take that spot. But this sounds actually pretty serious to me. It does. Fiery is, is questionable. Uh, he didn't, as you mentioned, he sat out the last eight minutes of that game. He is still actually okay as a spot-up shooter because we can see he can still mm -hmm. knock down that shot. But you wonder on the defensive end if they would run him around, which you expect the Hawks would do if he was hobbled. This That's is a good point. Yeah, I think the Hawks need to burn him defensively if he's out there. And no yeah. matter what, I mean, they just have to do a better job on the offense end because I don't think they're stopping LeBron. Yeah. I've, and no matter who's on the floor for the Cavs, they're scoring 90 points. I think the Hawks' offense has to be better. they got to pass the ball more. They didn't pass enough in game one. This is a bit of a Chris Paul situation here, too. You won game one. You mm. got at least a split yeah. in Atlanta if you're sure. the Cavs. Maybe David Blatt even chooses, whether it says Kyrie says, hey, I could give it a go, I can knock down shots. Maybe even says, you know what? We already got that split. Yeah. Rest up a little bit more. We'll see. Again, keep your eye on NBA.com for the latest on him. So we know a couple things that the Hawks need to do tonight. They need to rebound the basketball better. Mm -hmm. They need to hit some threes. And I would go through Al Horford a little bit more. But the game changer that we're going to focus on, they need to get Kyle Korver going. And game changer presented by FanDuel the leader in one-day fantasy sports. Uh, Iman Shumpert was all over him in game one, and it really, Corver found it hard to get shots off and even get open looks. So Mike Budenholzer has to find a way to just get him open looks, because even when Kyle Corver, let's say he's gone 0 for 8, he can still stay on the floor, because the Hawks know, and the defenders know as well, that he only needs one look or two looks, and he can really change the game. So it's very important. He was a big part of their offense throughout the season. He's been a big part of their offense in the playoffs, but he really is struggling in the last couple of games and they just need to find a way to get his confidence back and get him to knock down a few shots. Everyone keeps saying they just need to find him open looks, but like we saw in the Wizards series, when the game plan is for either Beal or Porter, or in this case, Shumpert, have been specifically told, don't leave him. It's working. Don't leave him. How do you get him? I know you run picks and they yeah. do all that, but if the guy's game plan is to be completely locked in on him, I just don't know what you really can uh, do. It's four on four basketball at well, that point. That's the challenge for, that faces Mike Budenholzer to try to run some sort of play, some sort of diagram that he can't, that Shumpert is running into screens and picks up. I get that. I, get benefit, that. I mean, the benefit is you're still dragging a defender with him. Yeah. And he's taking shots like four feet behind the line, which is fine for him. You just space it out a little bit more. Some of these are rattling in and out as well. When we come back, starters top 10 plays of the week. You're watching the starters. Back with the starters, Lee, what day is it? Tuesday. <laughs> Friday. Thank you. Let's get to the starters' top 10 plays of the week. Wake up, Lee, at number 10. John Wall in the second round with the fancy layup in traffic, all with the bum wrist. Nice little English off the glass, pops it in. Nice. Gonna miss you, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good summer. Should have been an all nba -er as well. <laughs> At number nine, James Harden with the beautiful wraparound pass. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Hold on. Let's hit you with the baseline look. This is where it's gorgeous. Oh! One of nine helpers, Jay Adande, made this joke. The only reason why he should have passed on the last play was to get his 10th help to get him that triple double. Ha! Let's stick with the beautiful passes here at number eight. It's the Warriors, Leandro Barbosa with the low oh, bounce that. pass nice. to Iggy. Oh, gets and hit one. and one. Now I am a sucker for a nice bounce pass in traffic. Who are Could you, it? Lee Ellis? Yeah, I know, <laughs> Lee loves his layups. I love my uh, long bounce pass. That one passes. snuck in there. That's beautiful. nice. I mean, it is, it is, it's beautiful. Okay, that angle's horrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks, little, one. looks a little easy Just there. ignore that one. Yeah, don't worry about that one. At number seven, DeAndre makes this look too easy. Takes the body contact from Terrence Jones and still throws it down. You usually take body contact and then lay it in. But no, this man, no. body contact done. That's really bad defense, actually. Oh, the foul. Foul, foul him and get out of the way. Well, I think he's almost foul trying to foul him. Yeah, he did foul. At number six, another oop. And it's from Bogey. Oh, yeah. From the land down under, Andrew Bogut going high, showing up the athleticism. Oh, yeah. Head at the rim, That's wow. All the way from Dandenong. Is that a place in Australia? I think that's guessing? where Bogut's from, Frankston, Dandy, Nongway. Oh, same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> wagga wagga. <laughs> Number five, James Harden. He calls this his stepdaddy, the step back. Oh, yeah. On Austin Rivers. It's so nasty. I mean, look at the oh. balance on that. Yeah. And then JJ Reddick just happens to be there. He gets a jumper in his face for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guy. Oh, oh yeah. Mean, yeah. Cook it up. Stir it up. And number four, back to the Warriors. Game two against the Rockets. Andre Iguodala. Whoa. Jumping in the DeLorean, taking us back to 2006, <laughs> 2007, right? I mean, this is old, yeah. Iggy. Oh, I thought the crowd was actually going to run on the court after this. They were so hyped up. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Again, it's been a while since you've seen a really good Andre Iguodala dunk. Feels good. At number three, I'll give you a nice dunk. Kent Bazemore, if he plays more tonight, give him some of that. Oh, yeah. That's Kent. beautiful. 
Get out of here, Tristan Thompson. Ooh. Bang. Ooh. Late. He Late cocked it back a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Come on, Cam. Yeah, that's the only guy <laughs> that's ever been on the starters on this list. Controversial, <laughs> I think, <laughs> here. Controversial at number two. LeBron's dunk better than Bazemore's? No. Oh. No, but here's the reason. But he gets a phantom. Cam. No, here's why we love it. Look at Kyle Korver's defense. <laughs> Well, this is strange defense. I think Corbin. The oh, see you later. He wasn't gonna do anything. Maybe he passes. Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, he's not gonna block LeBron. I'll no, play that. No. At number one, Steph Curry, 62 <laughs> feet, according to the box score, bangs it home. No biggie. <laughs> Switch bomb. Tosses it in. Yeah. Whoa, man. And he said in the post-game interview he hadn't made one of those since college. I honestly almost don't believe that, and that's why it's fitting that there's a young fella back there yeah. in a Davidson jersey <laughs> on the right. Nice stuff, Steph. I think Steph's a terrible liar. Yeah, he's never well, he, one he takes a sh like Maybe not a in a game. Yeah, maybe not in a game, uh, but there's video every pregame yeah. of him like <laughs> yeah, shooting one from the tunnel yeah. and hitting it in 50 I think feet. Steph knows. All right, uh, uh, moving on here. He didn't crack the top 10 there, uh, J.R. Smith, with any highlights, but we all know in game one on Wednesday, he made 10 of 16 shots. He had 28 points, eight boards, three assists, one steal, one block, and eight three-pointers. I mean, he went bonkers there uh, in the second half. He was hitting everything he threw up, so the internet had some fun with it, showing that he didn't even be looking <laughs> what he was throwing up. Two water bottles, cash. Wow. You know, garbage. Recycling, yeah. A Pop-Tart. Pop-Tart, yeah, keys, like, look at this. So, we decided to see if we could uh, replicate it. There's Lee, not even close. Yeah, ball. Trey taking it to the cage. Uh, oh, a little short. short. A little short. Beard looks good in the sun, though. <laughs> Thank you. Sunglasses? Short. Throwing things over your head a lot harder. Oh, hey, that was close. What's that? Coffee. Ah, coffee. Nope. Uh, no, coffee. into the Flavia machine. <laughs> Dad showing off the ice here. Yeah, this one uh, isn't going to work out, I don't think. Not as uh, easy. Oh. Mm. No. Right in the cup, I like right? The, uh, I like that you nope, kept trying, nope. though. Two ice, one cup. No. <laughs> no, no good. And a pen in the pocket? Oh, Ooh, that was close. That was close. Final one. one. Yeah, we did it. Yeah. Hey. Great job. There it is. <laughs> All right, one more break. When we come back, Lily's very solid play of the night. You're watching the starters. Back with the starters, Lee. Who wins the very solid play of the night? The Golden State Warriors cap off their victory with this beautiful inbounds play here. Starts off there with uh, Harrison Barnes. Ends up with Steph, Harry Bow, back to Draymond in the corner. And watch this one. Swish, Swish bomb. bomb. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful stuff from the Warriors. Started off early. Yeah. This was their second basket of the game. That's a three. That's beautiful. And that's what I call a very solid play. Thanks for the hairy thumbs. <laughs> Harry Bow. <laughs> My thumbs aren't Harry too bad. Bow. Oh, yeah, I guess Harry Bow. Uh, Harry Bow. All right, uh, this morning, guys, it's Friday. So we recorded our hour long drop podcast. It's up on iTunes and the blog. We, uh, Talked in great detail about both conference finals, got into some all defensive team snubs, and went off uh, off on a little tangent talking about whether dishwashers are overrated. They are. <laughs> it was, yeah. well, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler yeah. alert, no reason to listen <laughs> now. Lee thinks dishwashers are overrated. We'll be back here though on Monday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern to break down all of the conference finals. Thanks for joining us folks, and remember, some people on the internet are funny. Race the night, people.